Hello my friends and welcome to MK Mobile. So the tree is gone. We got some new decoration instead now. I think I think a lot of people will appreciate it. We got some stuff to review guys and uh, it's kind of good but also bad. As you know Pyromancer Tanya has been in the game files since the last update so it doesn't mean new update there's gonna be no updates uh, in two days. Uh, they're just gonna roll out this character and uh, I, I don't even remember what she's all about. Uh, I, f I fought her in the tower, but it was such a long time ago. I, I remember there was something about fire. She was like a lot of fire, 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 which is, I guess, cool. But God damn it, we have so many fire characters. We have Scorpion. Uh, we, we have uh, basically so much gear that applies fire. And now we, we got Tanya, which is going to be a, a gold character, which also is going to be for money. And impossible to get otherwise unless you get super lucky and get her from quests or something like this I don't I still don't understand how can they how dare they release gold cards for money like gold cards should be something that people should be able to grind to that's just ridiculous to me so that's why I'm not really excited I'm not I, I'm probably gonna spend like maybe 20 30 40 dollars to try to get her just just so I can say I tried, then I'm gonna fail, and I'm gonna never try to get her again because I just don't care. However, the good thing is that when you try to get actually good characters, like for example, when I tried to get Sindel, I actually managed to get uh, uh, Gold Cassie Cage. So these gold cards that they release as incredible ripoff and pay to win, they're available if you try to buy, like, for example, uh, Nightwolf pack, where, which gives you, like, a chance to get Nightwolf plus five gold cards. Every one of those gold cards have a chance to be Tanya or Cassie or any latest gold characters. But honestly, no matter how good she is, she is a gold, ca she, she's a gold card. She has only three gear slots. Her stats are like a gold card. No matter how good she is, she's not going to be better than, than, than the strongest diamonds in the game. And considering that she's gonna be more difficult to get than strongest diamonds in the game, she's gonna be more difficult to get than classic Liu Kang, classic Raid, and all those guys. She's gonna be P to win gold cards, so it, it doesn't matter how good she is. Let, let, let's be honest. Uh, saying that, let's let, let, let's watch this clip. They have another one of those uh, very nice clips, so let, let's watch it. Greetings, combatants. Welcome to Pyromancer Tanya's official gameplay walkthrough. Tanya uses a unique dust throwing move which blinds her opponents and increases any fire dust throwing move. Doesn't that sound familiar? Spec of Scorpion combo ender. <laughs> All right, sorry. Let, let's watch first and then I'm then I'm going to interrupt and comment. Damage dealt. This makes her a great supporter for fire-based characters. Let's take a closer look at the Fire Master. Tanya goes up against Cassie Cage and performs a combo ender. This move has a chance to apply fire thanks to Tanya's passive, Devil's Dust. Then Tanya unleashes her first special, Cannon Drill. This attack guarantees fire on her opponent and Cassie is eliminated from the fight. The Fire Master begins this match with a combo ender that applies fire. Then Tanya unleashes her second special, Surging Blast, which activates her passive. Devil's Dust is unleashed and Jax is blinded by it. Tanya's fire attacks deal 50% more damage to those affected by Devil's Dust. She then performs another combo ender, which stacks fire on Jax as he is still affected by Devil's Dust. Tanya performs her X-Ray up and over against Classic Jade. She shows no mercy, launching over Jade and breaking multiple bones. Jade won't make it out alive, and Tanya leaves her remaining opponents with Team Cripple. In this match, Tanya performs her first combo ender against Devora and applies fire. Then her unique combo ender releases Devil's Dust, and another fire debuff is stacked. Blinded from the dust, Devora tries to attack but misses. Tanya fires back multiple times and takes out Devora. Tanya's martial artist and outworld teammates benefit from her Devil's Dust passive as well. Melina takes the advantage of Quan Chi being blinded by the dust and performs a successful combo ender. Tanya's synergy transforms this combo ender into a fire attack, which stacks another fire debuff. Melina takes out Quan Chi. In this final clip, Tanya goes up against Kotal Khan. Her Devil's Dust blinds him and applies fire. She then unleashes her cannon drill move and takes the win. Not much of a challenge. 
Thank you all for watching the official gameplay debut for Pyromancer Tanya. Tanya will be available starting on January 21st. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you for this beautiful introduction. I, I want to know. I, I want to show. Say one thing. Anybody else noticed how utterly unexcited he sounds? Like I, I feel like w when they had Sindel review, he kind of sounded a little bit more excited. But now he, uh, it feels like he, he, like the Tyler himself, the MK Mobile face, pretty much realizes. What a garbage this is that they're gonna sell us for insane amount of money these gold characters Even though she looks sick. She looks absolutely amazing, and I love her moves. Look at these moves. They're incredible She's gonna turn off the sound for now Her like when she does this when she goes like uh, on a stretch her passive uh, I Honestly there was so much stuff happening. I, I, I kind of lost track uh, something about Devil's Dust when she does combo enter, so then w w w when it happens, uh, they, they get blind, and also all combo enders have a chance to stack fire. Basically, I'm gonna summarize this in a few words. She applies fires, and she's good for people who apply fires. And she's gonna help people apply fires. Fires, fires, fires. Imagine put, making a fire team with this girl plus gi giving them like something like Spectre's Burning Vengeance or Liu Kang's gear where you can just fire, fire, fire. However, there's one big problem for a fire is uh, characters like MK11 Jade. Pretty much, yeah, she's the only one who is the problem because uh, anybody else, like th there is Fire Fist Liu Kang, but nobody has them. So in towers, this might be a problem. But I, I think that she is going to be good for towers in terms of doing lots and lots of damage to teams that uh, don't heal from dots. She might be able to melt those powerful tower gear teams because fire is a very powerful debuff. It, it basically dr it drains their power and it's, uh, it takes basically percentage of their health. So even if, if they have like a million health, the fire is just gonna tick for insane damage, so... Dots are powerful in towers, not so much in survival. You cannot go with a fire team in survival, because 99%, okay, 90% chance you're gonna face MK11 team with Jade, and they're gonna clap your cheeks because they're gonna be healing 100% of the time. It's just, the way the, the game works, having... Having a fire team is just not good for survival, but it is good for towers. For most of the non-boss battles, for most of them, fire is going to be very powerful. So, she, in, that, in that case, she is good. However, if she was a challenge character, if she was a reasonable character, a reasonable to get character, she would be so good. I would definitely use her in towers if she was possible to max out without dropping hundreds of dollars. But as is, nobody cares. Also, you should enable us to skip all battles in the challenge mode with coins since they're useless. At least let us keep multiple battles with a single top. Uh, th that is a good idea, but they're not going to do it, but because then you're going to be able to farm souls faster and they don't want you to do that. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Oh, man, but no game. Let's see what you got to say. Shut up and take my money. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Oh, a combo ender. That sounds absolutely awe-inspiring, the way Tyler said it. You're gonna have to do a lot more than that in adding Lily Monster to the roster. Though, to the roster, though, for me to say... Oh, who is Lily Monster? I don't know. The point is, yeah, I kind of feel like Tyler sounded like he was either super tired or so fed up with what he was doing. It felt like he was hold it at, at, at gunpoint while doing this review he was just reading from the script not a, not an ounce of excitement or pride tyler you don't have to stay there if if you don't like what you're doing i'm sure there's so many other companies who would be gladly working with you just saying just saying let's move on with the comments classic scarlet that would be pretty fun i guess 
diamond though. I don't. Wait, do we need another? I I don't know. It doesn't matter. Golds are literally diamonds. It, it's it's honestly it's better for them to release diamonds because at least they they, they cost the same money pretty much. It, they're equally difficult to get. So at least when you get it, you you better get a diamond than a gold. That's just my opinion. I'm trying to understand who the hell asked for her. Still no classic Johnny Scarlet in the game. People begging for corrupted Shinnok. Even behind paywall. Really? People people would pay money for corrupted Shinnok? I don't know. I hate corrupted Shinnok character. I wouldn't pay money for I mean, I would because I want to make a video on him. But that character doesn't excite me at all. I don't know, guys. It's just... It's useless. Save your time. It's just... They're not going to do anything. I don't know. I, at least not from reading the comments on the Twitter. Maybe if it would make monetary sense for them to do something, then, then they're gonna do something. But as it is, do you guys think you can fix the broken equipment and the broken characters also fix the modes that keep crashing? I honestly would have you guys fix that stuff and bring a new character in this whole... bring a new character in the new tower. How about the fatal tower mode? What? Uh, okay, this comment. It, it needs some punctuation, let's, let's say that. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see... I'm gonna make it bigger. Yeah, it's just more fun. I, I want to see. I want to see Ronin Kitana near my face. It smells bad though. I wish. I wish. I kind of want to go to the different screen because she stinks, you know. Anyway, uh, I I honestly mind blown by the fact that they did not acknowledge a single mistake, a single bug in the new update. They just, it, it feels like they don't care. They just keep spiling on, they keep releasing new character. They, they keep behaving like nothing is wrong. They literally broke multiple pieces of gear, multiple characters, to the point of them being pretty much useless. Like Rain, for example. And they just, they didn't even say a word about it. Just, just make a tweet. Or something. I don't know. It just blows my mind. They just keep going with their script, with their schedule. Not like it feels like, like the whole Netherrealm studio. They like they work on a game like one week before every update. It's like they work on other projects and then like every couple of months, they're like, okay, it's time to do an update on MK Mobile. You have a week. There is bugs in the game left? Who cares? You have a week. Get it done. Get it released. Get a new tower done. Get a new set of gear done. Add a few more characters. You have a week. And th this is how we get all the bugs. Because they're just... And this is why we're not getting any updates in between... Like, any patches in between updates. Because the whole team just moves on. And you're left until the next update where they have a week to fix all the old bugs and implement all the new features they need to implement. That's the only explanation I have, to be honest, and it's ridiculous. I don't believe this game is not making enough money to pay more people to work on this game, to, to, to add new game modes, to, to fix bugs more carefully. Like, I don't believe it. I assume it will take me a year to obtain her from the first time through a 750 souls pack opening. Then I can gradually fuse her and have her maxed out in February 2047. That is a very optimistic prediction, to be honest. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. That is... That is exactly what's gonna happen. Nobody... They're just releasing characters, first of all, that nobody cares about. Nobody literally asked about her. It feels like they just had... Uh, they just had, like, uh, this whole thing coded from MKX. And they just decided to throw it in the game just to... For some people who are like perfectionists and collectors that want to get have every single character in the game so they can spend money on her. But they don't really care that people didn't ask for her or if that it's going to be impossible to get for most people the useless character. Anyway, I'm done here. My, my, my job is done. My, my, the whole point of the video was to review a gameplay. And she looks interesting. I think she has potential. So we're going to find out and see how difficult she's going to be to get. Let's wait. Let's find out. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you, members and Patreons and uh, every viewer right now who's watching this video. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about the new Scarlet and uh, which team would you try her in if you manage to get her? Maybe I will play your team if I manage to get her. 
Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Gross. You're so freaking stinky.